Bon dia. Good morning. So, this paper introduces uh, a methodological proposal, some examples uh, about scenic performances, and some points for discussion. So, as key elements, we have, for example, musical instruments. Archaeological findings are the main source for the definition of ancient musical instruments. Statues, figurines, reliefs, mosaics, base uh, or, well, or wall paintings provide us a large and valuable detail about illustrate uh, the shape, structure, components of ancient musical instruments. However, these representations, far from having the high definition of a modern photograph, are schematic and often even symbolic. On the other hand, we come to a new problem when we deal with vocal music, considering that singing played the main role, for example, in ancient Greek music. We have no idea about the vocal technique in ancient cultures. Written sources are silent on this too. All referred aspects entail difficulties in the task of per performing ancient music, but leave a fertile soil for sowing. Soundscapes, contexts, and professionals. Music is nowadays an autonomous activity, but in antiquity it was not separated from other daily life aspects. It was linked to specific contexts and functions, called funerals, working, athletic training, contest, drama. Many scenes represented on reliefs and painted walls in Egypt show musicians and dancers playing or performing alone or in ensembles. In tombs belonging to dignitaries, we find pictures with a symbolic meaning. This iconographical corpus allows reconstructing a whole universe which includes the various functions of music and dance and the related social or ideological fundamental aspects. Greek painted pottery reflects a high proportion of musicians playing in private symposia with an audience made up of men or couples sitting on clean eye. Another frequent subject show, shows musical instruments as symbolic elements or attributes linked to mythological characters. In less quantity, we can mention musical musicians taking part in sacrifice rites before temples or in funerals, or musicians accompanying athletic training, or some pictures representing music lessons and contests, or symbolic dances, like, for example, military dances, pirihe, or manet and satyr dances. The catalogue of professionals involved, involved in music in antiquity include instrument makers, material providers, teachers, composers, instrument players, soloist singers, choirs, choir masters, and managers. But far from this real, uh, from this real dimension of music in performance, we, are, we have to count on music theorists, who we can presume to be some kind of philosophers well versed in mathematics and astronomy as well. Sources of music theory contain a complex structure made of calculations, conditions and philosophical concepts that make hard to believe that they could be totally applied by music performers. Another field for research is the inquiry about the relationship between ancient music, on the one hand, and space and architecture, on the other. Experimentation can help us to make trials and proof hypotheses through performing in real places, in reconstructed buildings, or even using computer systems in digitally reconstructed buildings. This is the example, for example, uh, of the Thimele in the Epidaurus Tholos. About music theory and music scores. We know very little about music theory in ancient Egypt, Egypt apart from the chironomic signs represented on some stone reliefs. On the contrary, for ancient Greece, we know of many preserved works written by Greek music theorists, such as Aristoxenus, Ptolemy, Cleonides, and Plutarch, etc. We know that ancient Greeks used two systems for writing musical notation one for vocal music, another one for inter instrumental music. The ancient Greek mode-like scales have non-symmetrical intervals that differ from well-tempered Western tones and semitones. Uh, apart from this, they had a complex uh, melodic line called melisma. How to reconstruct this way of playing today? In addition, only a short list of ancient Greek music scores is available that is about 60 musical fragments whose notation and rhythm have been deciphered and collected and published by West and Perlman in the day uh, DAGN. 
Oh, sorry. So uh, computer tools help us to extend research possibilities in the reconstruction of, of ancient music, but we cannot go on on this issue today. It's too long. So let's go to uh, interpreting ancient music. So as a methodological proposal, we can say that developing research on this field necessarily entails experimentation. And through experimentation, we can prove hypotheses, acquire new knowledge, and transfer results to educational activities and disseminative actions. Arcusena projects engage transversal teams uh, in both research and creation, but focusing as a result <coughs> on the accomplishment of an integrated message for the audience in which all performing languages are treated together. Following fi figures show Arcusena's methodology in historical reenactments and uh, its stages. One, research, two, creation, three, production. Dealing with ancient Egyptian dance or ancient Greek music, uh, we have to study uh, and make uh, projects with interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary sorry, uh, teams because this involves ancient history, philology, musicology, mathematics, computer science, etc in a continuous line linking researchers and performers. We emphasize historical reconstruction and reenactments to spread leaf history to the public in archeological sites considered as natural stages where life of past can happen before contemporary eyes. Uh, here, just to, to show some examples uh, about projects, uh, in this case uh, about Egyptian dance, Seven Movements Egypt, you can watch uh, internet or video play, a uh, video clip about pair dance, or uh, ancient Greek music and dance, Ihos from the Olympus. A third one is a, a performance about uh, third, uh, fourth century AD, about uh, first Christians, and so it includes uh, uh, three uh, Christian uh, hymns in a ceremony, a liturgical ceremony, <coughs> and the play with characters uh, documented in epigraphic uh, uh, sources. So, I have no time to visualize this. So, three, third point, problems and reflections on interpretation. We see a possibly known coincidence between ancient Greek music performance and Greek mathematical theory of music. Second, we see a known coincidence between mathematical musical theory and real praxis. All its players were craftsmen without a mathematical and theoretical background. Ancient Greek music is above all melody, and more particularly, the way a singer used to express the lyrics of a poem. Rhythm is given by the metrical pattern of Greek verse and prosody. In this sense, ancient Greek music is monodic music. No harmony is to be presumed as we intend it today, but the technical features and possibilities of musical instruments that accompany the voice led us to assume some kind of heterophony and maybe harmonic resources. Performers used to improvise on the musical instrument mainly in preludes and interludes, and while the soloist was singing the melody, the performer played on the instrument following his tempo and sound. Maybe by improvising, he tried to achieve heterophony. On the other hand, several oldest players could perform at the same time. For example, a protaulus, being the main player in a wind ensemble, could be accompanied by a pithaulus, that is uh, an aulus player, uh, playing in a, in a lower pitch. This permits to deduce some kind of heterophony. Next, to harmonic principles, or at least the production of a parallel ornamental music line to the main melody. Images on pottery show us diverse uh, ensemble members. What does each one of, these, of those elements, uh, ensemble images, uh, represent in the sense of heterophonic execution? We have no precise idea. As argued by Carpenter, it's crucial not to forget the necessity of being careful about the questions we ask to images 
and understand the limits to the answers they can give. In the context of staging today ancient Greek music, a problem arises when we consider the fact that researchers, musicians, and audiences of the 21st century, with a near used to the well-tempered tuning and diatonic scales, are not familiar with the chromatic and enharmonic sound background. This brings with more complexity when it comes to play and restricts the extent of audiences interested in this type of music. So, conclusions. In this paper, we introduced uh, technological resources as means that let us understand the sound possibilities of instrument and better communicate uh, ancient good music with educational or social, social cultural purposes. Besides, live reenactments in which ancient situations are dynamically reconstructed are a powerful instrument for experimentation which significantly increases knowledge acquisition in this field. They contribute to better effective understanding of various life scenes of antiquity in which music was performed because this transmission occurs through an emotional experience. Reenactment means putting together archaeological data, written <coughs> sources, and performing arts according to historical criteria. In our opinion, some kind of creativity is necessary too, as far as we aim to make the performance interesting to the audience. How far is possible to reach all these elements as a unified expression? In addition, we have to take into account that available findings related to performing arts in antiquity are limited, of fragmentary nature, and even of diverse quality. The archaeological materials and the scores we can count on for performing of uh, ancient Greek music entail three obstacles. First, maybe the replicas of instruments we use are not completely adequate for playing all preserved music fragments. Second, we are unaware of certain technical aspects of the musical execution or presumable accessories that got lost from the archaeological track. Those details are not described in written sources and lack in iconography as well. And, and the third difficulty is that the available fragments of ancient Greek music are, in general, not at all the masterworks of ancient Greek music. So, consequently, what can we play in a concert is uh, in a concert dealing with ancient Greek music is a, determ a determined repertoire. We have no choice. Moreover, working on music reconstruction based on archaeological <laughs> sources and a few manuscripts means always to stay on an experimental stage, a laboratory where results led to new hypotheses to be checked. Thus, every performance, every concert is a work in progress. What's our challenge as 21st century music researchers facing 21st century spectators? Perhaps to cross time boundaries for experiencing, for experiencing past in prison, but in what way? Turning ancient images into live scenes, turning static pictures into dynamic experiments. This way we can approach the reconstruction of movement and sound in a real dimension. Furthermore, in terms of dissemination, what should be our purpose as researchers when we perform our results on the stage? Who are our addresses? Scientists, students, public in general? This consideration should be part of our research goals. In other words, what do modern citizens expect from our task? A last point. What about driving research on past reconstruction as a way of furnishing present art creators with new contents? Revisiting past in, with contemporary eyes is maybe a path to go. Thank you.